Hey, what's good guys? Alex S at New Tech. How you doing? I have the Samsung Chromebook Plus. If you've been following the channel the last couple months, I have been really excited about this Chromebook. I finally got it in my hands and I want to unbox this today. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is basically the first Chromebook to kind of merge Android apps together out of the box. So you don't have to go through any developer channels and stuff like that. This actually comes with the Android Play Store right out of the box. So let's actually take a look at the specs really quickly here. It has um, some features here. This runs Chrome OS and it uses a ARM processor, a hexacore ARM processor that's supposedly developed just for Chromebooks. And this features two, wait, uh, four gigabytes of RAM with a quad HD 12.3 inch screen. So uh, that's also a big selling point for this device, which is the quad HD screen. It also has a stylus and 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, but yeah, I, I've i been so excited to get this. Let's actually just cut this apart and start unboxing it. Where should I cut? What do I cut? There we go. Let's cut this. So yeah, I mean, I, I had a pre-order in um, a month ago after CES. I pre-ordered this on Amazon, but it didn't ship until... It's not supposed to come here until later on this week, like... I don't even know when. So um, I found out that my local Best Buy actually had three of them in stock. Most of the Best Buys actually have like three of these in stock. So I actually just bought it there and picked it up and uh, canceled my Amazon order instead. All right, so we have a quick start guide with, I wonder what that is. Let's take a look at that. I usually don't look at the quick start guides, but there is something here. I wonder what this is. It's a clamp of sorts. Not sure what this is for. I'm gonna have to read the quick start guide. But yeah, we have quick start guide and warranty info. Uh, Chrome OS is very simple to use. If you used Chrome OS before, you would. Uh, oh, okay, here. So it is. No, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Whatever doesn't work, that means that thing is for it. So we have the Chromebook here. Let's actually move some of the foam out of the way. So, in terms of the Chromebooks, I did a video about which Chromebook to, to buy out of the three, which is the Chromebook uh, Plus, the Pro, and also the C302. And I decided to get this one. Wow, this is... It's actually in my hands. I, I can't believe it. I actually have the Samsung Chromebook Plus in my hand. I'm gonna actually set this aside and finish the unboxing first. Uh, we should have some stuff in here. I think the power brick, yep, just the power brick and the cable, which is a all-in-one unit, so it's undetachable. As you can see here, USB-C Type-C right there, yep, USB Type-C with a uh, power brick here. And that is it. Let's set the box to the side. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this thing here, though. I don't, I'm not sure what this is. Let me actually pull this open. Yeah, I've actually never seen this before in any of my unboxings, so I don't really know what this is for. There's like some strip, little arrow strips here. Let me get that in focus. Little arrow like tabs, kind of like Q-tips, like mini Q-tips of sorts. And you got this little, like little clamp thing. Not sure what this is. I still don't know what this is even after holding it. Um, but yeah, here is the Chromebook. That is the Chromebook right there, the Plus. Oh my goodness, we actually have the Samsung Chromebook Plus. Let's peel off the plastic on the back where the hinges are. As you can see there, let's peel that off. Also get rid of the uh, ones on the feet here. Well, initial impressions holding this, this is definitely not the... Um, sturdiest slab of metal that you'll ever find. There's a lot of laptops out there. Uh, the one that comes to mind for me, the Pixel and the uh, HP Chromebook 13 G1. It feels heavier. It feels more solid uh, in terms of the metal. This one actually feels kind of like a, I guess a cheaper metal, but it's nonetheless a metal build, which is uh, very important. And it seems pretty, it seems pretty sturdy to me. It's not. It's not flexing. It's not bending. Um, 
Let's see if it can open with one finger. I don't think so. No, it cannot open with one finger, so the hinge is uh, pretty stiff. And there we go, we, we open the Chromebook Plus for the very first time. And we have this awesome aspect ratio here, which is uh, different from the 16 by nine, a three by two aspect ratio. As you can see, we can fold the hinge all the way back to 180 and all the way fully back. You can use tablet, which uh, when you're reading documents or like comic books or like eBooks and stuff like that, it makes it much more beneficial. And of course you can use it as a tent mode. So this is a, definitely a two in one device and Wow, okay, so let's let's actually uh, look around, see, this is the first time I'm holding it, so I'm actually pretty impressed. They actually did not have a display unit too at Best Buy when I went. Okay, let's go through all the ports and stuff. So we have a headphone jack here, so uh, unlike some of the smartphones and stuff, we still have a headphone jack. We have a USB-C connector here, and this is the micro SD card slot, which uh, is good that you can have expandable storage. Uh, once you start loading Android apps, you're gonna need it. Um, nothing down here, nothing here. And then we got the volume rockers, power button for when you're in tablet mode, another USB-C, and we also have, let's see, boom, that pops out, the stylus, the Samsung stylus. So this is actually not the same stylus as the one on the uh, Note 7. There's actually no physical button on here. So if you've ever used a Note pen before, the S Pen has a button. It says not, so this is actually a different one. I was gonna make a joke that um, Samsung just recycled all the Note 7 um, <laughs> pens, but no, these, these are actually different pens. And then we've got two speakers down here for your audio, and of course the feet. Let's see if it turns on. Is that the power button? Yeah. It might not have any juice, so we might have to plug this thing in. All right, I have everything signed in. It loaded all my pre-settings from my other Chromebooks. And we have it all set up. And I actually did get to play around with it a couple for a couple minutes before I started recording again. And I have to say, I am slightly, just slightly disappointed with the build quality. Um, you know, with that said, though, I, I am still impressed with it being a metal build. I'm still happy that it's a metal build because I have used something like the Azu C100 and other plastic Chromebooks, and this is light years better. But this does not feel like a Chromebook Pixel. It does not feel like an HP 13 G1. I am surprised though that this thing is so light. This is 2.38 pounds. And I you just gotta hold it in your hands because this thing is light as a feather. It's really light. I'm actually really surprised at the weight of it. I didn't actually uh, think 2.38 pounds was this light, even though I, I do have a 12 um, a inch MacBook too, which is around the same weight. So. Uh, yeah, it, this is actually really light. I can see myself using this as a tablet uh, in bed or um, on a train or something like that. And of course, Chrome OS boots really fast and uh, wakes up from sleep. So you can see it has all my presets down and we do have the Google Play Store here. So let's actually click on the Google Play Store. Play Store now on your Chromebook. Um, slightly, yeah, slightly different from the Android version because, or on Android uh, tablets and phones, but you know, it's it's optimized for Chromebooks. Samsung made a big deal that uh, they work with Google closely to make the Play Store um, feel natural on this Chromebook. Uh, but as you can see, we have a very standard uh, operating system, Chrome OS operating system. Basically every single Chromebook is about the same. Uh, you can't really do much uh, to differentiate yourselves. Um, the trackpad feels pretty decent. Let me uh, show you guys the trackpad. Yeah, the trackpad feels okay. It's not it's not the best thing in the world, but at the same time, it's also not the worst. It's actually it's a pretty good size, but I'm used to a little bigger trackpad, especially coming from uh, a Chromebook. Pixel or like a MacBook, but this is actually a pretty good size and it feels uh, Pretty responsive for the most part. Let's actually click on something. I've been playing Fire Emblem Heroes and It seems like Let's actually down. Let's just actually install this right now. Just just to see uh, The touchscreen integration seems pretty good 
right now, of course, we have nothing downloaded, nothing um, writing intensively right now, so we don't really know if this is actually how it works. Let's actually open up a uh, tab. We have, I think, we have touch, right? Yeah, we have a touch tap, tap on the keyboard, or you can also physically click on the keyboard, so it's just standard uh, on all the Chromebooks. Um, of course, it launches you to the Chromebook site, $20 Google Play Store credit for purchase of sound. Oh, I'm gonna redeem that. But yeah, we have, um, oh yeah, they, they even download my other Android apps from my other Chromebook. So that's one thing that I really like about Chrome OS. It's quick to update, quick to boot. And uh, let's actually use the stylus. Where's the stylus? It's on the top right. So I'm gonna click, detach it. And as you can see, this little menu popped up here. It says the stylus tool. Oop, oop, shouldn't drop that. We have the stylus tool here. Oh, it disappeared now, but um, let's put that window away. Let's see what we can do with the stylus. So, okay, stylus tool. This little icon right here is called the stylus tool. And we have capture region, capture screen, new, lo new note, laser pointer mode, magnifying glass mode. Let's do magnifying glass mode. So if you do this, you can do a little zoom mode so you can uh, read the text, make it bigger. It's pretty neat. Let's uh, see what else there is. Laser pointer mode. What's the laser pointer mode? Laser pointer mode just basically gives you an icon um, I don't really need that. Let's capture region. So I guess this is one where you can uh, screen grab of, of sorts, and then you can annotate in Google Keep, which is neat. I think Google Keep should be automatically down. To, there we go, we have Google Keep here. And then you can take notes. You can say, Alex says no. And then you can save it for some reason. If so, if you wanna take a note, or uh, let's say your professor or your boss sends you an email with a PDF file that you need to edit. You can screen grab it really quickly uh, or a photo or a magazine clip or something that you need to edit. Very simple there. All right, the game has downloaded, Fire Emblem has downloaded. I actually kind of like holding this. The the keys, like all the two and one other two and one devices, the keyboard is locked when you are, are, are fully rotated. It's smart enough to uh, know that. Uh, one thing I I have noticed though that could be a potential issue for Android users. Or actually, sorry, no, the trackpad is not locked. Yeah, the trackpad is not locked, which is kind of weird. So you got to watch out for uh, when you're holding it because the trackpad, if you touch it, it it stops. Well, as you can see, that's not very smooth there because. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you, you gotta train yourself. You gotta train yourself because you, you might hold in the wrong positions, but there is some bezel way that you can, um, there is some bezel here that you can prevent that, but you just gotta retrain your hands. Uh, I have noticed that I might actually have a difficult time doing this because I'm so used to having um, on-screen buttons. There's no back button, there's no recent apps button. This right here, this little icon on the very bottom, this is a recent apps button. So you can click on that, but there is no back button. And if you're used to Android, you really need a back button. That's that's how it works. Um, so let's actually just pop into the game, see if it runs smoothly. As you can see, you can't rotate it because uh, this, this app is not meant to be in that direction. So let's see. All right, so Fire Emblem, this is a huge tablet. I'm used to playing it on a small phone with one hand. So it's kind of neat that I can do this. All right, game looks like it's running smoothly. Of course, once again, you know, we're gonna need some time with this uh, to run its pace, have multiple apps open. As you can see, I have a few things open here. I have um, two games running from the Android Play Store, a couple Chrome tabs there, uh, and this seems to be running pretty well. So um, this ARM processor, I, I really wanna put it through its test to see uh, if it really is. Uh, able to handle most of the Android apps because that's really important here. Uh, let's uh, let's exit from there. See, I once again I accidentally pressed the keyboard, uh, the um, trackpad here. So yeah, that that is a potential thing I'm gonna have to keep my eye out on because I have a feeling I'm gonna have a lot of problems with that unless I quickly adjust my um, adjust myself to it. 
But yeah, this this seems pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with. I'm pretty happy with this actually. I'm actually really excited for this Chrome OS experience because once again, whoa, 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 whoa what's happening here? What happened here? Um, got a lot of apps stuck opening. Yeah, see this this is all this all happened right here because I kept clicking on the trackpad on accident. So I opened a bunch of apps in the background that I did not want. So that is a potential problem. Uh, there might be a settings. Maybe yeah, maybe there's a settings thing where I can actually close. Um, can I close that app? Yeah, okay, I force close that app. Maybe there is a settings button where I can lock the trackpad while it's um, in tablet mode. So uh, I'm gonna have to mess with the settings, but as of right now, the apps seem to be running pretty well and the build quality seems to be okay. It's not the best that I've ever used. Uh, I could see myself having some potential issues uh, using this as a tablet once again. But uh, the screen looks beautiful. Touch screen looks very interactive. Uh, using the Chromebook Flip 1, Lita and I had problems with the Android apps and touch latency issues. But so far, it seems like the touch integration is good. It seems like the trackpad is fine. It seems like it runs the Play Store um, without too much problems. So I'm actually pretty excited to check this thing out. And be sure to subscribe for when we have the full review out. And I will be back very soon with a lot more of our other videos. I'm actually gonna do uh, some specialty videos on this Chromebook too, because it seems like a lot of people are interested in it. Uh, probably a, a video on the stylus and all its features after I get a, a, a couple weeks with it, so I can get a feel for what it's supposed to do. Um, but yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. If you liked the video, be sure to comment, subscribe, and like. If you didn't like the video, well, you should still subscribe because I'm 100% sure that you're going to like the content that we produce in the future. Until next time, bye!